presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Tuesday Night Baseball from Miami tonight. Game two, three games set. Yesterday, the Marlins beat the Mets, opened the homestand with a W and brought themselves within two of 500. So they meet again here tonight through the Mets and the Marlins. Everybody getting ready. David Wright, Mike Dunn, a Lucas Duda sighting. Jonathan Neese, Brad Penny, ready? And a thumbs up. Penny's ready. We hope you are as well. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. It's an email Twitter Tuesday, so we await your arrival tonight as well. Marlins open up the series with the win. They're two uh, under the 500 mark. It's a win. It doesn't matter how pretty it is at this point of the season. Yeah, I think both managers agreed that it wasn't the uh, most pretty prettiest game but uh, at least when you win a game like that it feels a whole lot better. I think a good example though of when you put pressure on a team sometimes they'll bend and sometimes they'll break and the Marlins lineup did that from top to bottom. Yeah it's it's really nice to see everybody in that lineup contributing. Yelich did so. Donovan Solano with that sacrifice safety squeeze the push button. John Carlo with the home run number 34. Casey McGee a good game backing up Big G. He had a couple of hits. Garrett Jones, a big hit with bases loaded. Ozuna, a triple, couple of hits. Jared Saltalamacchia had a double. That's Javria. So when you win a game and everybody contributes like that, it's a very good feeling afterwards. And it seemed like everybody pitched in the ball game as well, <laughs> which means the starters tonight, both managers hoping, will get deep into the ball game. Let's start with Brad Penny. What to expect from the veteran? He's not the same guy that face the Mets in years past you know it's his fifth game with the Marlins it's his third start five and 13 in his career against the Mets. but you're absolutely right different players on the Mets and Brad Penny himself has different stuff <laughs> okay continuing the Chevron pitching matchup Jonathan Neese the Marlins have seen twice this year yeah this guy quietly uh, puts together a solid seasons he's uh, had two games here at Marlins Park he's won one of them and he has an ERA at 208 Three earned runs or less in 23 of his 29 starts. That's pretty good. All right. You ready for this? Emails and tweets. And when we get back, one of the bright young stars of the National League, Christian Yelich, joins us live. Allison Williams will do the honors. It's Marlins and Mets.
which go down. Live, Allison Williams, Christian Yelich. Thank you, guys. Christian, it wasn't pretty, but you find a way to beat the Mets last night, 9-6. How determined was this team to start off this homestand and the final month of the season with a win? Uh, well, every game has been big for us. Uh, that last road trip, this this homestand, the next road trip, and then after that, every game matters. And um, you know, we gotta we gotta win as many as we can. So for us to battle back yesterday and get that win was big for us. All right, I know baseball players are creatures of habit. Uh, how nice is it to be back to a normal seven o'clock start after the two early starts in Atlanta and yesterday here? Yeah, we had a we had a little bit of a weird schedule, you know, with a bunch of we were in three different time zones, played a night game Sunday, came back, played a day game, so. You know, it's good to get back on that, uh, you know, 7-10 game time schedule, and, um, you know, I think it's going to help us. All right, Christian, thanks so much for the time. Guys, back up to you. All right, Allison, thank you. Ready to go, Marcelo Zuna. Getting his routine down, getting all the handshakes. That means baseball's around the corner. That means Mets and Marlins. Sean Carlo tries to continue his tear. Game two coming up. On Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places by AT&T UVerse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 800. AT&T mobilize your world by Checkers. Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Beach craving for quality for only a buck. Cha-ching. How about your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the Duke is in the house. Please welcome Brad Penny to the pitcher's mound. And here come the Mets. Meet the Mets. Greet the Mets. Jan Lexus brings you the Mets. Juan Lagares in center field. Curtis Granderson is in right. David Wright at third base. Lucas Duda is at first. Travis Darno, the catcher. Matt Den Decker's in left. Dilson Herrera had an adventurous game yesterday with a triple, a homer, and two errors. Wilmer Flores is at short. Jonathan Neese will hit ninth. And you see the numbers of David Wright against. Brad Petty, that's back when Brad Petty was a, a little younger and David Wright was a little younger. You know, you have two guys in that lineup that uh, have seen Penny a lot, Granderson and, of course, David Wright. But it was a different time, different time for, for all the players. Brad Penny was a different pitcher. So he goes up against a club that's given him trouble over the years. 5-13 and 13 with a 6.25 ERA against the Mets. This is Pinch of Penny's first pitch. Appropriately for Brad Penny, and he misses outside, and it's 1 0. Penny is 36 
Ligaris, Granderson, and Wright open the first for the Mets. And a liner into right center field, a base hit. Ozuna picks it up. And the Mets are in business with Ligaris with speed at first. And there is a look at that defense tonight for the Marlins with Yelich, Ozuna, Stanton. No changes in that outfield. McGee, Jeff Baker at the corner. Bacon there against the lefty. Echeverria, Solano up the middle. Salta Lamacchia behind the plate. Curtis Granderson now, as we've seen in his tenure, this is his fourth year. Terry Collins likes to run. He likes to put pressure on an opponent. He does not have a lineup with a lot of firepower in it, and so we'll see if a, a night like tonight with Penny on the mound, if Ligaris or Granderson or further down in the order, guys are running. Not as many at, at bats as David Wright, but Curtis Granderson four for 11 against Brad Penny. Penny catches the inside corner. Toby Basner calling balls and strikes. Mike Malinsky at first. Andy Fletcher at second. Mark Wagner at third. There's Terry Collins. He's got his ball club at 64 and 74. Injuries have taken a, a bit of a toll. And the Mets very much in a retooling, rebuilding mode. Ground ball. Baker looks, flips, gets the out. Jeff Baker wanted to take a look at second. And was composed enough to get it to Brad Penny. You know, I think Jeff Baker certainly wanted to make that play at second, but when he reached in to get the ball out of his glove, didn't have total control. Saw the veteran, decided, okay, don't have control to get that out. There it is right there. He just didn't have a good grip or feel on the ball. So he turned and flipped to Penny covering. So good job by Baker and a good job by Penny getting over to cover. Baker getting the start with the lefty Jonathan Neese on the mound. So Penny. Faces David Wright. Now you saw the numbers. 12 for 20 with four home runs. And we'll see if anything's changed. Penny doesn't have that same fastball. Wright maybe doesn't have uh, full strength right now. He's been bothered by a shoulder. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, Mets fans that believe as, as heroic as David Wright is uh, trying to play every day, the shoulder's really taken away from the extra base hit power. Just two extra base hits. Since the All Star break, a couple of doubles. Breaking ball, it bangs off of Salt to Lamacchia. Yeah, right since the All Star break, 40 games is just 33 for 153. That's about a 215 average and a slugging percentage in the low 200s. There's Ligaris. Lucas Duda's on deck. And he's out front 0 2. Tell you what, though, one thing David Wright has always done, and especially no exception this year, is hit the Marlins. This year, 22 for 54. That's a 407 average against Miami. Outfield towards right center for right. Penny here in the first. This is low and he sticks with a fastball 94 miles an hour. There was a time when the Duke would rush it up there in the upper 90s. Yeah, he would uh, start off at 94 and then gradually get mid 90s and then touch 97 98. Last start for Brad Penny was against Arizona on the uh, 14th of August. Worked a few times out of the bullpen since then. Ligaris with a base hit. He's at second. Right rolls one into center. That's a base hit. And the Mets are on the board. Ligaris scores. And David Wright drives in his third run of the series. And so now he's 13 for 21 against Brad Penny. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes you get a combination like that. So you throw his success in there against Brad Penny. You throw in the fact that he's hit over 400 against the Marlins this year. Then you throw in the fact that he came into that at bat 301 with runners in scoring position. That's 619 for a batting average. <laughs> 13 for 21. Now Lucas Duda. And you talk about second halves. And Lucas Duda is certainly having a, a terrific second half. 
Duda has been healthy, productive, chased Ike Davis to the Pirates, so to speak. And the big slugger fouls it off. Actually, there's only one, one other National League player with more home runs since the All-Star break. Lucas Duda. Take a guess. John Carlo. <laughs> so a couple of big power hitters in the house. A oh, one misses out. I was gonna go Ben Revere on you. Hey, emails and tweets tonight, by the way. We haven't been able to get started. The Mets are off to a quick start. They have a run. David Wright's at first. Lucas Duda climbing in. Duda one for four in yesterday's ball game. Smoked foul and picked. If you didn't see yesterday's game and you're wondering why at the outset we remarked it wasn't pretty but it was a win. Marlins won nine to six in a game in which the Mets made six errors and the lead changed numerous times. The Marlins to their credit though put a lot of pressure on the Mets late in that ball game. A couple of the errors were balls that were thrown away at home. Wild pitches. And a safety squeeze bunt. An overthrow coming from the outfield. Due to fouls it. In fact, so much so that the Gecko decided to arrive early tonight. Wow, top of the first. That is early. That's Terry an Collins early arrival. With the Geico quote of the night. It was a big league baseball game, I can tell you that. There were a lot of phases of the game that were not very good. And Lucas Duda swings and misses. But you know what, Tommy? Sometimes you got to win ugly. You know what? <laughs> you think about it, a win such as the Marlins had yesterday is a whole lot better than a one nothing loss which they had in Atlanta. <laughs> they play a very good game. Just had trouble scoring against Alex Wood. So you'll, you'll take them. And I think anybody that's ever played this game or been around this game know that they're hard to come by. Travis Darno. Darno the young catcher. Finally getting a chance in the big leagues to play on a daily basis. Two for four, a couple hits, scored a run in yesterday's ball game. Oh. Anyway, a little change up to the right handed hitter. Drops in for a strike. And a throw to first. Rick, first tweet, I'll throw it out. Umpire rotation. How is it determined, and do they travel with the team? They do not travel with the team. Umpires travel commercially, and the rotations are made by the Umpires Association and Major League Baseball. Breaking ball strike. And sometimes, especially late in the season like this, you get a little wrinkle in the rotation as we have for this game. Well, I believe there's a, an extra umpire in the house. So the rotation with Basner and then Malinsky. Fletcher was not in the rotation yesterday, and I think a lot of that had to do with the Labor Day weekend holiday. Mike Winters was in the uh, crew. Winters was at second base, and he's not out there tonight. I don't know that he's waiting in his umpire outfit in case something goes wrong. I suspect he's having a nice dinner in Miami somewhere. You would hope he'd take that opportunity. He's a good umpire and a good guy. One, two. In the dirt. So the Lockia sees it and picks it up. A lot of people, Rich, are, are tweeting the picture. It's a great picture of 
Garrett Jones, Nathan Evaldi, AJ Ramos with the K Cancer t shirts outside the uh, ballpark today. Wright is running and it's fouled off. If you didn't catch us in Marlins Live, we were wearing the uh, strikeout cancer shirts. Jason Mott came up with the idea, and the Players Association, some of the guys, the Players Association, there's that photo, jumped on board. You can get these shirts at 108stitches.com. That's good. A lot of, we've had a lot of tweets about that, Rich. 108stitches.com. Broken bat, and that's going to find center field. That's a good pitch by Penny, and Darno got just enough on it to get it through the infield. And that brings up Matt Dendecker. All the uh, proceeds from the sale of those shirts will go to the Players Association Cancer Charity. Our players, the, the Marlins players, chose Live Like Bella, which is a, a terrific mm -hmm. uh, charity. Jose Fernandez, a very big supporter of that, Live Like Bella. Org. Remember, uh, Players Association Executive Director Michael Weiner passed away from brain cancer. And so that certainly is uh, something that's near and dear to the Players Association, and we're happy to, to don those shirts. Matt Dendecker now for the Mets. And it takes a strike. There are nights where we're always remembered. What a fine facility this is. And this is one of those. That's a light rain. About 15 minutes ago, it was a torrential downpour in downtown Miami. It's moved through the city. It seems to be lightening up. That one is going to find the outfield. And into right center field, David Wright will score. And Brad Penny is getting pecked to death here. The Mets with four singles. Den Decker drives in right, and it's two nothing. For well, the last two base hits, balls that have not been hit that sharply. But Brad Penny, when he had that velocity, it would be a different outcome. But a couple of pitches in, that ball stroked well by Den Decker, give the Mets their second run. And so Penny has been extended to 24 pitches. The Mets have two runs. And Dilson Herrera, who seemed to be in the middle of everything yesterday, steps in. This is, uh, for a number of the Met players, this is audition time. These uh, final weeks of the season. Dilson Herrera being one. Den Decker. Wilmer Flores. So guys getting opportunities. <laughs> As the Mets look forward to next year. Youngest and active player in Major League Baseball. Yeah, how about that? Home run. I wonder if he got the ball because it was soaking wet. It did find the pool in the Clevelander. He is from Columbia. Runner goes. And that one popped behind another Columbia. Donovan Solano makes the catch. Rough first for Brad Penny. 2 nothing Mets.
College Park, where the Mets have staked themselves to a 2 0 lead. Miami's lineup brought to you by J.M. Lexus. Christian Yelich, five game hit streak. Donovan Solano at second. John Carlos Stanton homered yesterday, just missed another. Casey McGee right behind him had two hits and an RBI. Marcelo Zuna in center. Jeff Bakers at first. Jared Saltalamacchia. Danny Echevarria. And Brad Penny in the nine spot. One RBI shy of 100 is Stanton as well. And the Marlins see Jonathan Neese for the third time. He's pitched well against him in two starts, 13 innings, and three runs. Well, the 27 year old is uh, a 500 pitcher right now, 50 wins, 50 losses. But uh, over the years, last few years, very steady in the rotation. And a guy with the abundance of pitching the Mets have, a guy that could be dangled out there on the trade oh. market. Yelich leads it off. One for six in his young career against Nice. Then Solano and then Stanton and Stanton has had very good success against this lefty and the Marlins have had good success against lefties this year. Yelich terrific July outstanding August and he opened September. Yesterday by going one for four with an RBI brings the ball with them nifty bunt Nice's throw he's safe and Yelich has a hit ah, beautifully done and to show the speed of Christian Yelich maybe not the most perfect of bunts but when you have a left hander out there Nice falls a little bit to the other side the third base side watch his delivery so he has to kind of regroup he gets to the ball with Yelich's speed Gets him an infield bunt single. And so that's how the Marlins first starts with Yelich extending his hit streak to six games. And now Solano, and even though Solano didn't have a hit yesterday, he was involved in one of the bigger plays. Safety squeeze in the eighth, the inning in which the Marlins pulled away from the Mets and won at nine to six. Long look down to Brett Butler. And I know that A.J. Ramos was credited with the win, but the guy that really deserved the win was Brad Hand, who went three scoreless innings in relief of Henderson Alvarez. No real news on Henderson Alvarez. Uh, the Marlins hopeful that the oblique injury heals and that he's able to rejoin the rotation. There's no need to put a guy on the disabled list at this point. As rosters have expanded, Solano lifts it to right. Granderson back. And then in and makes the catch. There's a look at the Mets defensively for this one with Matt Den Decker, Juan Ligaris, Curtis Granderson in the outfield, David Wright, Wilmer Flores, Dilson Herrera is the second baseman, Lucas Duda, and Travis Darno behind the plate. Tommy will be happy to know Chris has tweeted in that Dilson got the ball as soon as it landed in the bullpen or in the Clevelander Stanton takes inside the Mets bullpen apparently banged on the glass a nice going for the Mets bullpen and then. did some swapping. There. Ah! Stan takes a strike and it's one and one. Against Nice nine for twenty four with two homers. And that one for four was nearly two for four with two homers yesterday. That one off the end of the bat. And Granderson to the track makes the catch. Yelich is tagging on his way to second, and he's in there. Even a ball that's off the end of the bat ends up on the warning track. Yeah, that ball took Granderson about a step away from the warning track near that right field corner. See a little vibration didn't hit it all that well but still took Granderson a long way and heads up by Christian Yelich knowing that Granderson was back there to tag up and get to scoring position. Casey McGee now. And McGee takes down low McGee had a nice day yesterday. Walked twice. 
had two hits, drove in two, one with the bases loaded walk, and one with an RBI double. Nice never one to overpower you, trying to pick at the plate right now against McGee. Yeah, his fastball is uh, of that cutter variety. He'll use that. Try to find that outside corner. He did there. There's a scattering report. Fastball sinks. He cuts it. Change up. He'll move it away to right handed hitters. After the breaking ball, and it's two and two. No question in this uh, tweet, but Dan has a nice photo of the uh, Jacksonville club celebrating their their clinching game. They uh, will start the playoffs. On deck. McGee's bouncer picked up, and Herrera throws them out, and the Marlins are done in the first. Español vía SAT por Kendall y West Kendall Toyota. Mets off to a quick start, a 2 0 lead. We check in with Allison Williams. Hey, Dub. Well, Rich, you and Tommy just mentioned the picture from the Jacksonville Suns celebrating their playoff clinching win into the Southern League playoffs. Well, Justin Nicolino tweeted this picture yesterday. Not a better way to end the regular season. Hashtag playoffs. Hashtag can't stop, won't stop, never been hotter. It's pretty amazing. As you can see, while they were so excited, not only did they make the playoffs, but they had to win 10 straight to clinch a spot in the Southern League playoffs. They did that on Sunday. They won against Mobile, but things got a little dicey. They ended up winning 6-5, but Mobile put together a rally in the ninth to cut it to that one run lead. And uh, Nick Whitgren finally able to get out of things, though. But it was a, a nail biter for Jacksonville. And Mike Redmond said it's good for these guys to get that kind of experience. He said the point of them playing there isn't just to learn how to be big leaguers. It's for them to learn how to win and compete in the playoffs and pressure type situations. And they'll be able to do just that starting on Thursday. Guys. All right. Thank you. Dub. Yeah, it's uh, it's always good to see a minor league team get into the postseason. 
Brad Penny gives up another single. Boy, a lot of them rich right back up the middle. So the the Mets have a pretty good approach against the veteran right hander. Lamar Johnson their uh, hitting coach probably pretty happy. <laughs> Penny just keeps wondering why they're all. Heading out there they really haven't been too many of the balls hit all that hard Ligaris liner in the first. Was probably the best of the bunch. So here's Nice and he squares. Maybe it's the fact that it's Lamar Johnson's birthday that the Mets uh, have followed his game plan by the letter. Now that game plan obviously has been, you know, don't try to do too much, stay back, take him up the middle. The right space hit up the middle, Darno went up the middle. Then Decker a little bit right center. And Wilmer Flores up the middle. And even as you pointed out, Lagarce's base hit was into center field. Then he's gone 2 0 on Nice. But with Alvarez a question mark, all of a sudden Brad Penny becomes a, I want to say larger than life, but he already is. He becomes a, a very big piece of the puzzle for the Marlins rotation moving forward. That kind of answers the tweet that Adam had. What's Brad Penny's role in the starting rotation? Mainly because he hasn't started in a while. Well, he, he could find a role depending on the status of Henderson Alvarez. And depending on what the ball club wants to do with De Scalfani and Andrew Heaney. Nice's bunt is a good one. McGee gets the out at first. As well, it was nice to see three scoreless from Brad Hand. Miami really needed that, and it kept the Marlins in the game. They eventually came back and won it. Tomorrow night, this series concludes, and of course, at 7 10, kids eat free. It's Wednesday night, every kid 12 and under with a ticket gets a coupon for a free KM Beef Frank bag of Frito Lay chips, small Pepsi, or Aquafina water. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. Yeah, really, really right, uh, Rich, about the, uh, the job that Brad Hand did because so many times that guy goes unnoticed in a, in a game that went the way the game went yesterday. Because if that guy doesn't pitch three scoreless, the game goes the other way. Well, and it also has an effect on tonight's game with how Mike Redman uses the bullpen. Marlins had to use Sam Dyson, Mike Dunn, A.J. Ramos, and Steve Ciszek after hand. The good news is, as you pointed out, with September call ups, the Marlins have got Di Sclafani and Heaney available to pitch tonight. And Brian Morris is getting closer as well. We saw Dan Jennings warming up yesterday. That was a good sign. 1 1 pitch. Breaking ball hit hard to right. Stanton in. It's going to be over his head. And it's going to the wall. And Ligaris has himself an RBI double. And the Mets have a 3 0 lead against Brad Penny. Again, another Met hitter staying back and going the other way. We've talked about all the base hits up the middle. Lagaris has two, one into right center, a hanging breaking ball. But because his approach was to stay back, he hits that ball well and gets it down in that right field corner. So it's Granderson now. There's one out and he pulls one Jeff Baker's way. That's two ground ball outs for Granderson over to Baker. Now back to the matchup we talked about from the outset and that's Brad Penny against David Wright. Most of the damage was done long ago and Penny was probably a Dodger at the time. And uh, Wright was uh, coming into his own as a Met. But he's now 13 of 21 with four home runs against Brad Penny. 
Now let's see Brad 36 David right now 31. That one gets by Salt to Lamakia and a run will score. We'll look at the replay on it and we'll see exactly where it went. It's going to be ruled a wild pitch, but it easily it, uh, could be a pass ball. It, it very easily could be a pass ball. Regardless, it is a messy way for that fourth run to score. And Penny oh. gets a strike on right. Center field Ozuna back over his head and off the wall. And David Wright has got himself a double. Just his third extra base hit of the second half. But he's hurt the fish with two hits here. Well, it's no mystery, and Mike Redman knows that as well. That Brad Penny's not fooling the Mets at all. This is not a murderer's row, and they have seven hits. With two outs in the second. Yeah, you talk to uh, Terry Collins, and he'll tell you the area that the Mets need improvement in is his offense. They need some offensive players. Anthony DiSclafani getting loose. Ah! And so David Wright is now 14 for 22. Against Brad Petty. That's not easy to do in batting practice. Those are numbers you put up against uh, your, your good buddy in Little League. <laughs> Here's the 0 1. There's a round in batting practice often where the hitting coach will say, All right, you stay in there as long as you're getting hits. And they'll count the number of hits, and it's judged by the the hitting coach you hit a line drive in the center field that's base hit you hit a ground ball in the short you're out. And it's hard to stay in there. For five six swings in a row. Rich have a tweet from Ant. Ant wants to know how uh, Jose Fernandez doing after the Tommy John surgery saw Jose today. He was out uh, shagging. There he is. Always good to see Jose. Good to see him without the sling. So he's making progress. Well, speaking of that, I've got a, an email from uh, Lee in Naples. Can you explain what Tommy John surgery is? And Lee, there's an Inside the Marlins show coming up, and it's all about Tommy John surgery. In fact, you go to the source. Dr. James Andrews is on the show. Tom House, who's I guess methods and teachings have uh, shed a little more light on the uh, pitching mechanics. He's on there, and I and I know the show produced by Frank Ford is going to be much more uh, information than we could ever give you on TJ surgery. Yeah, and it'll be much better than the inside the Marlins about the broadcasters too. <laughs> yeah, much more informative. When we get back, new additions, the call ups, Allison Williams will talk about who's here and how they might be able to help.
fine year. Hit over 300 with lots of pop. Anthony DiSclefani, whom the Marlins have seen, had a fine year as well. Andrew Heaney finished at 5 and 4, 15 starts at the AAA level. And Kike Hernandez, 21 games. Hernandez, of course, coming over with Jerry Cozart in that trade with the Astros. Talked to Kike a little bit uh, today during batting practice. Said he got to play a few positions. Got to get some reps uh, playing all the time. It looks like you, you're early enough in a game. You just don't want it to get out of hand. And right now Mike Redmond seeing uh, the way the, the Mets are hitting Brad Penny may make the move with Anthony DiSclefani. Marcelo Zuna, Jeff Baker, Jared Saltalamacchia. And a strike to Ozuna and it's 0 2. The oddity though is. And I know there are reinforcements here. If the inning moves along Penny's due up fifth. Would you pinch hit for him this early in the game. Penny had a double his last time up he can swing the bat. Well it's. We don't know the answer to this but I'm assuming with Di Sclafani throwing whether Penny hits or not. That's he, right. He's coming out of the game. And that's my point. You yeah. might want to let Penny hit just to hit. And and save your bullets, be it Kike Hernandez or Justin Bohr, for later in the game. Depending on what the situation is, bags loaded, one out. You're probably going with a yeah, a position player. One two, and Nice misses up, and of course. You're down for nothing and you're facing a guy that if you get anxious and you get over aggressive you're playing right into his hands. So patience and approach now. I'm sure that's. What uh, Frank Medicino has tried to preach. Going into and especially now that the Marlins have fallen behind for nothing. Ozuna smacks one to center field hits it well the is back. And he makes the catch. So Ozuna is out. If you've got a fan photo, whether it's around the ballpark, around the house, or uh, wherever it might be, hashtag at FL Fan Photo and tweet it, and it's your chance to become the AT&T fan photo of the game. It used to be Tommy fans would come to the game and they they talk with each other. Now they just text each other. Hey, honey, what would you like to eat? Want me to go get some popcorn? Here's Jeff Baker. Most of Baker's at bats against the Mets came early in the uh, season. That's why you see he's one for 11. As you put it the other day, it's a tale of two seasons for Baker. Cold at the start, hot over the last two months. By the way, we've seen Di Sclafani warming up. We will not see. Andrew Heaney. He went six and a third innings yesterday. Pitching for uh, New Orleans. Actually left the game with the lead but ended up with a no decision. So it'll be a few days before he's available. Baker goes after a high breaking ball and swings and misses. And Jonathan Neese has the first two outs of the second. Boy, that's a hanger that never came down. It kind of stayed up. Hey, Jeff Baker, your your eyes light up when you see that pitch, but you're expecting it to come to a different area. Checkers bringing you Fox tracks. Jared Saltalamakia now. Hernandez on the horn and he's I'm sure giving final instructions as to yes this goes in yeah the fact that he's been throwing the whole inning kind of uh, indicates that
Nice is out front 0 and 2. Struck him out. Fastball under the hands. And Salta Lamacchia is down on strikes. And Nice looks sharp. Mets up or nothing. Not a tattoo. It looks like a sleeve. Right? A Jean Carlos Stanton sleeve. Lexus of Pembroke Pines upcoming broadcast schedule. Mets tomorrow. Braves on Friday and Saturday. All of those times reflect Marlins Live. And then 1230 on Sunday, and then it's off to Milwaukee, the land of beer and cheese. And we'll get lost in all of that for four days with the uh, Milwaukee Brewers who are trying to Hang on in the central. The Brewers have finally fallen out of first place. They've lost six in a row, a game back behind the Cardinals. Start of play today. Yeah, all of a sudden the, uh, the Cardinals have been playing good baseball. The the Brewers have hit uh, their first little little down spell of the season. But for the Cardinals, how about Matt Holliday has 12 RBIs his last three games. And the other hot Cardinal hitter. John Jay had a terrific oh. month of August. You could throw Descalso's name in there too. He had a few hits. <laughs> I know you like to throw Descalso's name. I know. He actually did have a good month. He had <laughs> moved his average up uh, into the low 230s. Breaking ball misses out to Travis Darno. Matt Dendecker, Dilson Herrera in the third. And so. Mike Redman and, and Chuck Hernandez hoping that Brad Penny straightens up or maybe they're figuring hey let's just try to get an inning out of him. And then. Pinch hit when his spot comes up his spot is due up second. Yeah I would think that was probably the the decision. Go ahead try to straighten things out try to get one more inning. But well, there are a few more balls hit like that. You might see Di Sclafani in here, and, and Di Sclafani has heated up, warmed up, and sat down. And it would be very easy to summon him pretty quickly. Tom Kohler, Jacob Degrom, who's had a terrific year for the Mets, and so has Kohler for the Marlins. Breaking ball away. There's Den Decker, RBI single. Mets have seven hits. All but one a single. David Wright is two for two. And that would be a leadoff walk. And Darno is aboard. Here's an email from Bruce. 
Back in the 60s and the 70s, the Mets had a popular interview show called Kiner's Corner. Mm -hmm. What do you think of uh, Jeff Conine doing at Conine's Corner? You can make it better because not only can you have the two top players of the winning team, you can select a fan from the winning team to be part of the show. I, I assume Bruce is volunteering to be that fan. <laughs> did you ever appear on uh, yes, Kiner's Corner? Yeah, it was, uh, it was great. I mean, if you were at uh, a visiting player, Shea Stadium and happen to have a good game. Well, you get the call to they had the uh, the studio was kind of down uh, in the bowels of the stadium between both clubhouses and you'd uh, head down in there and ha have a nice chat with Ralph Kiner. That looks like two Echeverria's turn is in time on the feed from Solano. Much needed double play. Nice to see and boy what a relief for Brad Penny. There's the pick and flip. I've talked about it before too with Kiner's corner. The real thrill. Certainly back in those days in the 70s you always needed a few extra bucks especially in New York. You you got a guest uh, appearance fee of fifty dollars. So you got to. Go out into town a little bit. Wouldn't go too far now, but back then, <laughs> Dilson Herrera takes in. So 50 bucks, Kiner's Corner. Mm -hmm. Although I will say this if there's a, a, a bowels of a facility that you don't want to be in, <laughs> it's the early years of Shea. Well, <laughs> even so, <laughs> even saying, I'm just saying. Hey, it was just a thrill to talk to the future Hall of Famer, Ralph Kiner. I remember a, a clip. You were not on the show at this time, but Tom Seaver was. And Ralph Kiner asked him, Are there any hitters that, you know, <laughs> give you trouble? And your name, he blurted out. Tommy Hutton. I can't get Tommy Hutton now. Liner to right. Brad Penny gets through the inning. Stanton makes a running catch. And down go the Mets. 4 0. New York on top. And as a result of the early lead by the Mets, Mike Redmond moments ago told Brad Penny that he's done tonight. And so Penny's start is over. Marlins will pinch hit for him. Ed Lucas is on deck. Echeverria against Nice. Marlins try to get something going. And out at first. We check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Rich, thank you very much. Terry Collins, the manager of the Mets, started his big league coaching career. Again, a guy like Leland who did not play in the major leagues in 1992 when Leland gave him a shot on that Pirate staff. And I asked him today about what he has done for him. The first thing Terry told me was he hasn't done anything for me lately. But after joking about that, he said, what a mentor he's been for his career. A couple of things he pointed out. One, he said, I've never seen anybody manage like this guy where he got the matchup 
in the ninth inning that he always seemed to watch, whether it was his pitcher versus a hitter or his hitter versus a pitcher. The other thing he mentioned is everybody on the team, all 25 guys felt like they were in the game. He said nobody ever used a bench like Jim Leland. And to pay the ultimate homage to Jim, take a look at that number on the back of his jersey. It's number 10, and that's the number that Terry Collins wears because of Jim Leland. Guys? Uh, it's good stuff. Boy, and that is so true of Jim Leland. And Lucas to right, Granderson back and there, and makes the catch. And Marlins fans saw that so much in 1997. You know, the way he, he managed games, the way he got to his bench. So, uh, learned a lot, Terry Collins did from Jim Leland. Jim Leland had a, a nice effect on Lloyd McClendon, who was the hitting coach in Detroit and is having a successful year in Seattle. Oh, you know, that's a good point because so often we talk about the uh, the effect out in Anaheim with Mike Sosha and the <laughs> spin off of different manager Joe Madden, Ron Renicky, Buddy Black. But uh, Jim Leland has had an effect on many. Yelich bangs one down the left field line. Then Decker cuts it off. Yelich not stopping. Strong throw in there. Well, the kid who came in hitting over 300, 307 against lefties has two hits tonight against the left hander, Jonathan Neese. And two beautiful base hits. A perfect bunt, first time up, and an excellent swing right there. And the thing you have to tell yourself. As a Marlin right now, there's a lot of time in this game. It's very early in this game. Here's Donovan Solano now, and you've got Stanton on deck. Benjamin has sent us an email and wants to know who do you guys think is the most consistent Marlin this season? He thinks it's Yelich as far as position players. He wants to know, Tommy, why do you think he's had. Such a successful year. Well, I think part of it, he, he, he's talented. He's very talented. He's 22 years old. He has a, a tremendous knowledge of the strike zone. You don't see him chase uh, too many pitches off the plate. He'll utilize the entire field. And you know what? When you're 22 and you have all of those, you just get better. That's the thing that's I think most exciting for Marlin fans is, is watching the improvement from year one to year two. Now it wasn't a full year one. Solano rolls one, diving stop right on his feet, bounces the throw, and it gets by and it skips away. Yelich will be sent home and he will score on the play. He was on his way to third. The rule is ball in flight, it's the base you are headed to and one. And so Yelich scores. Solano, the base he was headed to was first. He gets to second, and Miami gets a run. And it'll be a base hit. It'll be one and one. A base hit, then the error charge to David Wright. Yelich holds up a second because the ball's in front of him. And then the throw gets away from Duda. That's where, as a first baseman, you have to kind of give it up. You have to say, okay, he's going to get the base hit, but I have to keep the ball in front of me. And Duda didn't do that, and the Marlins get a run. And here's Stanton, and he fouls it off his foot. And in the replay, you saw Yelich wasn't running from second to third, but he had left second, and he had not retouched the bag. So by rule, it's one and one. Stanton drives one. Left center field. That's deep. Lagar is back. Looking. Gone. Two-run shot. John his 35th and Miami is right back in it and just like we said there's plenty of time why in the world would the Mets pitch to Stanton with first base open 35 home runs 101 RBIs for Giancarlo Stanton wow that's his third career home run Rich against Jonathan Neese Well, you could tell last night, watching him swing, that he was getting locked in. He had a couple of deep fly balls for outs after his home run in the game yesterday. Nice with a breaking ball that misses. 
to Casey McGee. Now, Nice may have had the game plan. I'm going to pitch carefully. In fact, that pitch was down and may have been low. And Stanton went down and got it. The first pitch really tied him up. There it was. Look, Hut. Pitch number one tied him up. Pitch number two just barely at the low part of the zone. So that tells me John Carlo was looking in that area, too. So he's gone over the century mark in RBIs at 101. Here's the 2 1 pitch. As the Marlins head into September, certainly their goal winning record, stay in the wild card race, keep winning games. But as well, John Carlos Stan has a shot to win a, an MVP award. That's never happened. And, and I think he's enhanced in that situation to win the award because the Marlins are still relevant here in September. McGee adds in the left center field. That's a base hit. Big turn. He'll hold with a single. Boy, all is coming with two out. The two out double by Yelich. The infield base hit. Then the error. Stands home run. And McGee hits one sharply past the shortstop, Wilmer Flores. I love the way it goes up the line because Casey McGee is thinking double. You always want to think that, especially in a one run game. Dan War, the pitching coach, is out to talk to John Neese. Neese was in a real good spot to begin the night. His team put four on the board and chased Brad Penny. He had the first two outs here in the third, but a Yelich single, Solano's hit, the throwing error by Wright, and then a blast by Stanton. Now here's Ozuna. That's a six game hitting streak now too for Casey McGee. Who's hit in 10 of his last 11 games. Ah! Ozuna flied to center hit it well. Sent Ligaris back to the track. You see his number is solid against Nice. Nice has had a, a rough go, I think, since the All Star break. Two and six. An ERA just under five. Defiance High School in Defiance, Ohio. Chad Billingsley. Same spot. Had a pretty good spot, but not a strike. Yeah, much better the first half of the season. Moved to first, McGee not going anywhere. Swing and a miss, and the Marlins are done, but not before they get three back. John Carlos Stanton has hit 35 homers and driven in 101, and this blow brings Miami within a run.
within a run. Now for the Marlins to hang in there they need Disco to be sharp. Anthony DiSclefani who got the nickname when a variety of teammates whether it was at the University of Florida or in the minor leagues couldn't pronounce his last name takes over. Well remember we saw Disco make his major league debut back in May May 14th at Dodger Stadium won that game got himself a base hit had a couple of RBIs. DiSclefani and Triple A this year, 11 starts. Had a 3 3 record, a very respectable 349 ERA. One of the things we've seen in his times that he's been with the Marlins, he's been a pretty good strike thrower. And that's what he needs to do here keep that ball down. He has good two seam fastball and a good breaking ball. So Brad Penny goes three innings, seven hits, and gives up four runs. All of them earn. When you think about it, ah! yesterday, Henderson Alvarez two and a third innings. Tonight, Brad Penny three. So once again, Mike Redman is going to have to piece things together and hopefully you put Disco in the situation that Brad Hand was in yesterday. Hope he, he can get three innings, maybe four out of Disco Funny, and that certainly helps him at the end of the game. Stefani misses down low. Wilmer Flores, Jonathan Nice, and then Juan Legaris. Mets have a bunch of hits, seven of them. Legaris and David Wright both have two. Flores finds one foul. Hut, one of the best emails all year, and it comes tonight here, the first email Twitter Tuesday in September. I'm going to save it, but I'm just I'm telling you, you don't want to if you. Getting well, up you're, you're not giving it to me now. No, it's two oh, strikes. Okay. I, I, okay. It's just proper protocol here. Two strikes. Diving stop. Echeverria will hold it. And Wilmer Flores is aboard. All right, Marlins and Mets tomorrow. Chevron Crazy Eight ticket offer is in effect. Participating Chevron will get you your Chevron with Techron gasoline. Just bring your receipt to the ticket office. Get 60% off lower tickets, lower level tickets. Restrictions apply to a crazy eight Wednesday tomorrow. Here's Nice. He's in a bunting mood. You would think Flora is a leadoff hit. This email is from England, Tommy. We have viewers with the MLB at bat and MLB extra innings all over the world. And Dan is watching in England. He said, My wife from England. And they have a, a different vernacular across the pond. And every time you talk about Jose Fernandez or somebody shagging, my wife just shakes her head. <laughs> because shagging over in England means something totally different. Di Sclafani picks it up. If you've ever watched an Austin Powers uh, movie, if you're a Yank, you know what he's talking about. I, I just, I, I'm at a loss because I have no other choice of words to use for shagging chasing down fly balls in batting practice. I'm glad, you, takes, I'm glad you said long. I'm glad you said fly balls. I thought yeah. you were going the English way. <laughs> oh no. We're, we're in America here Rich. <laughs> OK. By the way Dan also adds Tommy you and I briefly met in 1976 when he attended a Phillies charity function one afternoon and ended up with a Phillies wives cookbook. And his cousin was uh, Tug McGraw's neighbor in Clementon. Okay. So there you go. Very that's, good. That's, that's, that's good. a terrific email. That touches a lot of different subjects that are of interest to everybody, including so, shagging. So then, Rich, when you and I leave the ballpark tonight, we will get in the lift. It's true. <laughs> and go down to the ground floor. Into center field. That's a base hit. Ozuna picks it up. Floor is around third. Ozuna's throw to the plate, and he's in there. And the Mets answer right back and make it 5 3. Boy, a three hit night already for Juan Ligaris. And they really missed him when he was on the disabled list. We've seen the way he can play center field, he can chase him down with the best of them. And Ligaris with his third base hit, two singles and a double. 
and a couple of RBIs tonight already. And so here's Granderson. Lagares is at first. Ozuna made it a close play. Great thing about Ozuna's throw. He's able to come in and charge and, and make it a close play, but still keep that ball down where it could be cut. So because of that, Lagares has to stay at first base. He can't move on to second. It was fun to listen to Ozuna yesterday after the ball game on Marlins Live post game talk about the throw that ended up in the dugout. And just like we suspected, he was going to go home, realized he didn't have a play, then wanted to go to third. Runner on the move. Salt Lamaki's throw at the bag. Safe. Head first slide, Lagares in there. Pretty good throw by Salty. He just got a great jump off Di Scalfani. Kind of slowed up with the head first slide and made it a little closer than I initially thought. That is close. You know, when he got into that head first slide right here, he slows up. His hand kind of got stuck in the dirt. Wow. That's close. I don't know that there's enough to overturn it, but it is close. Closer than you thought it would be. So Granderson now a chance to add to the New York lead. Pop up and into the seats it goes. Brad Penny for three innings, four runs. Anthony DiSclafani here in the fourth. Has faced three hitters. He's given up a run. The Mets have nine hits, eight of them singles. Stacy from South Palm Beach emails Over Labor Day weekend, husband and I were in D.C. We toured the Nats ballpark, got to go up to the press box. Only got as high as the print media level, which is below the broadcast level. And you're right, it's way up there. The, the tour guide wanted to know if the Marlins broadcasters ever mentioned up how high it was. And I assured him that you had. That's Stacy of South Palm Beach. Now we're up at, here, we're in a great location here. I'll yes. be honest, I, I don't think as far as the comfort of our booths, we've not heard one visiting broadcaster with any complaints at all. Broken bat McGee a dive and he dropped it. Foul territory it's a foul ball it had a weird funk to it. And for McGee he couldn't make the catch. Well it's a jam shot a broken bat the ball spinning and it wasn't hit that sharply plus Casey McGee was well off the line. By the time he got there, the ball got him on the heel of the glove. He got there in time. The ball got him on the heel of the glove. He upset at himself, picking dirt out of his ear and brushing it off his face and jersey. Here's a 2 2. And he got him. Well, Tlamachia holds on a strikeout for Di Scalfani. But still, he's got David Wright to get. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Marlins. All right, I got a, a little bit of a trivia. I'm, I'm tweeting you this question on email, Twitter, too. All right, go ahead. David Wright has 221 career hits against the Marlins. That's third most. All right, I'm going Chipper Jones. All right, Chipper is second at 259. You would you would go Jimmy Rollins, and that would be a good place to go. And I would expect Utley is probably in the top five. Jimmy Rollins, 286 career hits against the Marlins. 
Wow, Jimmy. Well, right. Sad to see Brad Penny go. Two for two against Penny and 14 for 22 now in his career. Of course, every pitcher, even the most successful ones, always have a guy that they can't get out. Mike Redmond ate Tom Glavin alive. Hut, you had great success against Tom Seaver, and and I'm telling you, but it's it's usually in the case of David Wright, he's put together a tremendous career. He, I mean, he in another year or two, you could be talking about Hall of Fame with David Wright. Right, but he's not hitting six. He's not hitting 640 against every starter like his yeah. Penny. It's usually a guy like like me or Redmond, though. Uh, you know that's a great point. I, I watched Randy Johnson pitch a lot, and it always. I bet you there was somebody who. who it always seemed to be like the Mike Bordix or the yeah the Mike Gallegos or the Marco Scuderos. Those the little guys that used to hit Johnson. We got to check. I'll, I guarantee you, Frank Menachino had a guy. Oh, Frank Menachino's got a guy. <laughs> you just asked. Oh, I guarantee he does. <laughs> Here's a two one. <laughs> it's outside. Frank, you got a guy. I got a guy. <laughs> Mike Redmond against Tom Clavin hit 438, 21 of 48. Wow. Crack staff. Best average average is against Randy Johnson. Let's see if I'm right, if there's some little guys in there that had nice numbers against the big unit. Right cranks one down the line. That's real trouble. Stanton over for it, and it lands in fair territory. Bounces over the fence. The Mets have another run. Wright has another hit. And the onslaught continues. Well, the, the tough part is that the Marlins were able to get right back in it with the three run third. And just like that, the, the Mets have added two more. And David Wright, we talked about Lagaris with the three hit game. David Wright, three hits, a couple of doubles. That's his 24th three hit game against the Marlins. David Wright. Crack staff hard at work tonight. As they should be. I mean, it's it's six to three in the top of the fourth. Lucas Duda struck out, bounced up. With right, the runner at second, not a, a shift with Echeverria, but Donovan Solano at second base is well over and into shallow right field. So with Etch having to stay put right there, there's a nice hole up the middle. Actually, Duda got a base hit there yesterday. Here's the 1 1. Swing and a miss. You were talking about appearing on Kiner's Corner and getting a check for $50. That was cash. It was cash. Oh, yeah. Well, Rudy has a story, and I don't know if it's true, that says that at some point they were checks made out to bearer because the producers wouldn't know in advance who was on the show. And one time Yogi was on the show and kidded <laughs> afterwards that they misspelled his name. Well, even if it's not true, it's a great Yogi yeah. Berra story. It is. It's yeah. a good story. It's <laughs> Who knows if it's true? That would foul back. South Florida Honda dealers. Bring you Marlins live. With Greg Menervini, Jeff Conine. Nine questions with Preston Wilson. Get you ready for Marlins and Mets. Final game, three game set. Get you ready for Kohler and DeGrom. After watching yesterday's game and after watching the four innings here, you're not sure what to get ready for. This is 
been a wild ride so far, Marlins and Mets. You know, we had a tweet about uh, Marlins' all time uh, single season home run record. We've talked about it. Gary Sheffield hit 42 in 1996. John Carlo hit 37 in 2012. So Stanton now with 35 certainly has that 42 uh, in reach. Two and two to Duda. Sonny Boy and Trishy watching in sunrise. Notice that in the box score, Solano and Echeverria both had SH after the names in yesterday's results. What exactly does that stand for? Sacrifice hit. You get to us in the booth at Fox Marlins on Twitter. Ball in the dirt, and it's in front of Salta Lamacchia. Right will move up. Wild pitch. Wild pitch was uh, enormous. Now, this game could take a lot of different turns. The Mets could score 12 runs. Well, if it takes as many turns as the game yesterday, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Plays that seem big get lost in all of it. But remember, on a pitch that skimmed the ground and clipped off the glove of Salta Lamacchia. That was ruled a wild pitch and a run scored earlier in the ball game. That was the difference in the game until the Mets got two here. And they're going to get another one here on a broken bat single to center by Lucas Duda. And it's 7 3 New York. Well, just like that, the Mets have responded with three runs to match the three the Marlins put up in the bottom half. Boy, and where do you turn if you're Mike Redmond? Brad Penny wasn't effective. Anthony DiScofani. Is getting knocked around. Brad Hand threw three innings yesterday. Andrew Heaney, as you noted, started yesterday. Yeah, that's uh, one of the areas where a lot of fans kind of just don't understand. It's like, why do you take pitchers out so fast? Well, if you've got a bullpen, you can't use them every night. And you have a lot of guys who are going to give you one, maybe two innings. And that's why it's so important in a situation like this one. For Anthony DiScofani to try to hang in there and give Mike Redman a couple of more innings. Because all of a sudden his choices get more limited in the bullpen. And his choices are affected by the score of the game. Close game, you make different choices. If you're down by five, six, seven runs, as you noted, your choices get limited. Darno fouls it back. For the Mets with 11 base hits already. Since you challenged me to a trivia question, apparently some of the listeners want to challenge you. And we'll do that when we get back. McGee fires across the diamond in time to get Darno. Mets just keep hitting and scoring. 7 3.
gave up a three spot. Still finds himself up in this ball game. He was up four nothing. Almost lost the lead. Now he's up seven three. And he goes to work in the bottom of the fourth. We check in with Allison Williams. Hey, Dub. Whenever the Marlins take on the Mets, you are sure to see around the clubhouse in the press box their longtime PR guy, Jay Horowitz. He's been with the team for 34 years. So you can imagine he's a bit old school, but he is a good follow on Twitter. Check this out. He said, made my donation to support ALS, but seen everyone's videos of the fad on television. I had to get in on the action. Of course, so Horowitz. As Baker gets a single there. Horowitz is T bowing though. So he, he got his fads a little mixed up, but he's dropping down in the T bow pose. He is at J underscore Horowitz PR. And uh, this is him up there. He's probably a little confused as to why we're talking about it. But here's a great thing about how he came to be on Twitter. He refused, right? Well, the Mets owner, Fred Wilpon, said, Look, if you get on Twitter, I'll give you some incentive. If you can get 10,000 followers within 24 hours of joining, I will donate $10,000 to a member of the PR office who's battling breast cancer. Her name is Sharon, and, and she had been going through some tough times. So Wilpon offered to make the donation if Jay would get on Twitter. He did. All the Mets players tweeted out to their followers to follow him. He got the 10,000 followers, and he made that donation to help out a colleague who was really struggling. So it's a good story. And now, guys, I'm happy to report 34,000 followers for him on Twitter now. I'm telling you, he's hilarious. You got to you got to check him out. He is, and, and Allison and Tommy, it's very appropriate that he would get onto Twitter and, and get so much following because technology to him was baffling to begin with. He is known around baseball as the king of the butt dial or pocket dial, if you want to <laughs> be politically correct. He sits on his cell phone and calls random reporters and writers and broadcasters. And right now he's he's sitting there and they, there's a monitor nearby and he's going, what in the world are they talking about? But one of the one of the best guys in the game, if you ever need some information, it's not a Mets series until you talk to Jay Horowitz. Without a doubt. And he's been terrific to us in uh, in my years in the National League and, and of course your years as well. Saw Tlamaki up after a Baker single and he cranks that one over the head of Brett Butler and into the seats. The counts one and two. So Tlamaki is struck out back in the second. All right, here's a, a viewer wants to challenge you, Tommy. Uh oh. Without cheating, <laughs> which means don't look it up on, on your iPad. Which Marlins pitcher has the most career home runs as a Marlin? That was, uh, my first guess would be Dontrell Willis. That would be my guess too. What about wasn't Dennis Cook a, a yeah, he was, but he was a relief pitcher. And he's he, and he who was, was used who was used by Jim Leland numerous times as a pinch hit. So he didn't have a lot of home didn't runs. Didn't have a lot of ABs. Josh Johnson. I'll tell you another good hitter. Could be Josh Johnson. Alex Fernandez was a terrific hitter. So good pitch, a uh, good hitting pitchers. Liner to center, and it's in to center field. The answer is Dontrell Willis with eight. Okay, that my my first guess. Always go with your instincts. AT&T Rewind. Everybody asked to see Chris Hatcher's walk-off homer. And here it was. Oh, look, a little bat flip, too. He yeah. knew it. He knew it. That's a Southern League championship. The gigantic blast. Walk-off homer for Hatch. <laughs> look at the smile. And, of course, he would get to the big leagues as a catcher and come back as a pitcher. And he will live in infamy in Jacksonville Sun history. Wow, that was awesome. He crushed that ball. He did. Hey, but by the way, what you were talking about this before, depending on how the game goes, is how Mike Redmond has to handle his pitching situation. Well, all of a sudden, if the Marlins get a little something going here, he's going to have to pinch hit. Yeah, if you get if you get a chance to go for some runs, you got to go for some runs. Here's Echeverria. Baker and Saltalamaki have hits. On the other hand, he could, if depending on the situation, have Di Scalfani up there in a sacrifice situation too. Echeverria bounced to second. Nice has given up seven hits. 
And Echeverria pulls it, which is rare to see. These I, wonder days. If, I wonder if all the guys in the bullpen have seen Hatch's walk off blast. I don't know, but that's I've seen it, but it's it had been about three years since I'd seen it, and it's even more impressive now. The bat flip I missed the first time through. A little bit. Not bad. I mean, when you hit a walk off to win a championship, you got a little leeway. That's right. The fun part is the smile as he routed second. And the dejected opponents walking off the field. Counts two and two. Miami trying to claw back again. Rich, here's a, here's a good one for you because uh, we were talking about this earlier, and I'm going to assume the validity of this. We're talking about guys against Randy Johnson, a 4.52 batting average. Bob Melvin. Bob Melvin. Placido Polanco. All right, there's a little guy. Randy Velarde. Hits Randy four. Velarde. So yeah. there you go. The little guys were uh, were good against him. Spraying a ground ball, a diving stop by Herrera on his feet. Echeverria pushed it to the right side. And here's the spot, Hut. You can't afford to not try to get these two runs. Yeah, if if there were first and second, maybe you would have Disco sacrifice, but now. You have runners second and third, and Mike Redmond seeing that, he's going to send up Reed Johnson. Terrific play by Dilson Herrera. Before every start, you always glance at the matchup numbers to see who's hit well against each starter. Even guys that are on the bench, even though they may not get in against the starter and who would have thought that Reed Johnson would get to hit against Jonathan Neese in the fourth inning. Well here he is and he's got good numbers against Neese. 375 average. The hard part for Johnson he's not been swinging the bat well in the second half of the season. Not a lot of A.B.'s. Those are the career numbers. Infield's back and there's one out. Johnson out in front, drives it left center. Ligaris back, both runners tag. And on his way home and scoring is Baker. And so Johnson delivers a run. It's 7 4. And up comes Yelich, who is 2 for 2. Well, he got the job done. He'll be saying to himself, I wanted to find the gap and get a couple of runs in. But you know what? Got the job done. And gets Christian Yelich up here, who's had a couple of really good ABs against Nice. Salt to Lamakia. Still out there. Yelich a bunt single and then a Double down the left field line. 25 doubles now for Yelich. Christian Yelich hitting 291. Carter Caps would be his first appearance in a long time. Liner left center field. Yelich gets the job done. Salta Lamakia scores. Ah, Christian Yelich with a sweet swing and a three for three night. <laughs> Rich, we're in for another one of these games. And this is one of those that you're never going to have enough runs. And especially with the way both teams are swinging the bat. Three for three so far from Yelich, all against the lefty Jonathan Nice, and all, especially the last two, beautiful swings. So Yelich at first. And Solano's up. He's flied out and has an infield hit. And how important right here with nobody warming right now in the Met bullpen. How important right here is it to see Donovan Solano try to get on base to get Stanton to the plate. Without question. Stanton homering a two run shot. His last A.B. against Nice. He's got three homers. 
in 26 career at bats against him. Yeah, Yelich is hitting it at 293 now. The top hitters in the National League coming into play today. I, well, I saw that too. You, you Th noticed that. 311. That's the uh, league leaders. Harrison and Morneau. Marlins get two back, but still trail 7 5. Baseball by Palmetto 57 Nissan and Palmetto 57 Volkswagen. Home of your money back guarantee and by MCCI Medical Group. Call us to schedule a visit for your nearest MCCI center. MCCI Medical Group keeping you healthy. Downtown Miami, wild one already at 7-5 Mets on top. We check in with Craig Minervini. Craig. Well, Rich, thank you very much. Carter Caps was acquired in the Logan Morrison deal, and he came on, and boy, was he impressive, averaging over 97 miles per hour, a big part. But then he had that elbow inflammation. In fact, the team was so concerned, they sent him to Dr. Andrews to take a look at the elbow. Dr. Andrews agreed with the Marlins doctors that Tommy John surgery was not needed, but it was in question for a little while. Caps was relieved. He thought his season might be over into next year, in fact. So what do you have to do basically just rest he rested for two months he started throwing again a little catch in August didn't have a rehab game till August 25th pitched less than four innings in the minors but had some good results of both the rookie league and in Jupiter a couple of scoreless innings Saturday with the hammerheads and now he's back on the mound and he told me the real thing he's happy about is he gets to pitch here in September he's back healthy and he wants to leave the Marlins with a good taste in their mouth after a pretty good start to the season guys. Well, he's he's thrown right into it, Craig, because the yeah. the Marlins are down two to the Mets, who have really swung it well tonight. New York's got 11 hits in their four innings of work, and Caps faces Matt Den Decker, Dilson Herrera, <laughs> throws a strike, and then Wilmer Flores. So he does have somewhat of a soft landing. It's six, seven, and eight. But to sit out that long, as Craig pointed out, not to have that many minor league. Appearances, he's right back in it. Well, and, and a great opportunity for Carter Caps, just 24 years old. And before he injured the elbow, he had appeared in nine games, so making just his 10th appearance as Marlin. Caps, who can touch 100, has that uh, unique delivery where he leaps very much like uh, Jordan Walden of the Atlanta Braves. Tall guy that stays upright and kind of lunges at the plate. Remember, we had the video of Walden and how his foot separates from the rubber and then dragged across the mound. Watch in super slow mo caps. Yeah, it separates, lifts, and separates before that front foot plants. He actually pushes a little further forward, whereas Walden kind of gets a little more airborne.
Down he goes. A nice return. Carter Caps gets a strikeout to open up the fifth. Marlins and Mets tomorrow's tilt. Checkers brings you the pitching matchup. It's a pretty good one. Tom Kohler's had a real solid year for the fish. Looking for win number 10. Jacob DeGrom has been a nice surprise for the Mets. He looks for win number eight. And here's Dilson Herrera. Tom Kohler's had some good games against the Mets, too. So far in this ball game, there's only been one, one, two, three innings. The Marlins went one, two, three in the second. That's it. <laughs> no Carter Caps would like to do that here. Herrera's popped out, lined out. Caps gets a strike. Vinny from Vero Beach, not across the pond. Has a question. For you, Tommy Hutton. It's been a big reduction in hitting this year by all teams, both leagues. Seems almost every game is a, a low scoring one. Pitchers have dominated this season like never before. Swing and a miss. Boy, when Carter Caps gets that breaking ball going along with a fastball, he's really tough to hit. Here's a look at the pitch. Dropped down a little bit, too. Vinny asks, was it back in the 60s that they raised the mound to help out the hitters? Actually, they lowered the mound. Yeah, they lowered it to help the hitters. But his question is, does something like that have to be done again to tip the scales back to, to even, so to speak? Well, that's a good question. What can be done to help offense? And, and we've seen all the, the numbers and the studies. That offense has, has declined. And it has. Some of that has to do with uh, baseball eradicating or at least starting to uh, get PEDs out of the game. There, there are a, a number of reasons that certainly could head the list. I think nowadays there are more pitchers without question who throw harder, 95 miles an hour or more. Everybody that comes out of everybody's bullpen is throwing hard. There are more changes. A hitter doesn't get to see the starter three, four, five at bats. Sometimes he sees a different pitcher every AB. I think the approach to hitting is is different now than it was. More strikeouts. Echeverria on his feet. Laser beam throw. Got him. And great defensive play just like that. And Danny Echeverria. Throws out Wilmer Flores. Carter Caps goes one, two, three. Echeverria. Nicely done.
in Miami. Marlins and Braves on a Friday night. It's a fireworks Friday. Fans 21 and older can enjoy a $4 domestic beer during happy hour. The Budweiser Bowtie Bar from 5.30 to 6.30. After the game, fireworks display presented by Waste Management. Marlins.com, the place to go for tickets. Stanton against Nice. Two-run homer last time up. And Nice with a fastball that misses up and out. Giancarlo hit one to the warning track in right field in the first inning. Marlins down two. And Nice staying away. He's trying to stay away with that two seamer that sinker. First base was open. Solano was at second. Nice got a strike on Stanton and then came in with a fastball. And it left pretty quickly. It ended up out by the home run sculpture in the the blue waves out there I guess. Not sure Red Groom realized that uh, balls would be pounded into the surf. In case you missed it. Well, that's such a solid swing. These misses up. It's three and two. Yeah, I think you're right, Rich. In, into those blue waves. The blue waves. This is in front of the, the Pelicans. There's Red Groom's autograph. Stanton drives it and it bounces by Ligaris. And Stanton's on his way to second with a double. Ligaris got enough of it that it didn't get all the way to the wall. Had it, it would have been a triple and maybe more. Wow, is he absolutely locked in? A heads up play, too, by Granderson to get over there and help out Ligaris. Giancarlo hits this so hard that Ligaris. Has a chance. Most guys will hit this line drive and drop from base hit, but hits it so hard it carries. Lagaris thinks he can get to it, deflects it just a little bit, and that allowed Granderson to get over there. If he doesn't deflect it, stands at third base. Let's see if the Marlins can get him over and get him in now. McGee has bounced out and singled, and Nice misses outside. You know, Jonathan Nice has given up five runs on nine hits. This has not been his best start. But the Mets have seven runs. The Fish have five. Mickey is hitting six straight. Got a tweet too that it involves Casey McGee. Jeremiah wants to know the Marlins going to resign Casey McGee. And then Jeremiah says, and will he be moved to the bench? Depending on the organization. Well, first of all, there are no third basemen that I know of in the Marlins organization right now. And so I would certainly hope the Marlins would sign Casey McGee and I would imagine he'd be right back in that number five spot in the batting order. Four or five spot. Buddy Carlisle in the Mets bullpen. That one line foul. Mary Beth has a tweet. I believe excuse me Rich I believe the Marlins do have an option. On Casey. I, I still like Mary Beth's tweet. Okay, go ahead. Tommy Hutton, did you really say lift and separate? Hashtag maiden form bra. I guess that was the, the catchphrase for maiden form bra mm. back in the day. It sounds like a madman episode. That's a bouncer to short, and that's not going to get Stanton over. And McGee will kick himself when he gets into the dugout. So an out, here comes Ozuna with Baker to follow. Madman or Masters and Johnson. <laughs> Tommy Hunt. <laughs> That's not quite the name of the show, but I, I well, I, I, I know that. I it, enjoy uh, the show. It's a Showtime uh, <laughs> original series. Plus, I, I also realize we're not on late night yet either. There's Ozuna. He's flied out, and struck out. So Stanton out at second. 29 doubles, 35 homers for Stanton. Ozuna swings and misses. You made a good point. You were talking about the uh, the batting leaders when Christian Yelich got his base hit. There are a couple of guys in the top 10 that are in the 290s. 
And it makes you think about, I believe it was uh, the year before they made the change of the mound that Carl Yastrzemski won the trip crown. I think he hit 301. 1968. They lowered the mound to what, 12 inches? Yeah. 1 1. Ah! Ozuna takes a strike. Seven five Mets. If you've just happened by this one, there's probably still a lot that can happen. Seeing as yesterday's game took a lot of twists and turns and ended up in a a wild finish. The Marlins getting three late to win it. Nine six seven five Mets here, only halfway through. Ozuna trying to drive home a run. Ground ball sharply hit. Nice pick by Flores. Crossed the diamond. He gets the out. It was well hit and well played by Wilmer Flores. So far, a tough night for Ozuna. He's hit a couple of balls hard. That line drive to center. That ball there, extremely hard. But Flores, good backhand pick. Now Baker. So a leadoff double by Stanton and he hasn't budged. Nice the lefty has induced a pair of ground balls to short. Lifts one to center field. The Marlins are going to leave Stanton out there. Ligaris makes the catch. Still a two run Mets lead. And Marlins. Look at the crew. Look at the lid. On an email, Twitter Tuesday in Miami. Like this one too? Lots of runs. What do you guys think? Good? Say, if you can't find a hat that you uh, like at the team store, then you'll never find one. I love the, the college uh, themed Marlin caps. The Nike dry fit caps are really good too. Retro cap in there. 
Carter Caps, a one, two, three, fifth. He's been the most effective pitcher Miami's had tonight. Brad Penny, three innings, four runs. Anthony DeSclafani, an inning and three runs. Yeah, Carter Caps with the uh, first one, two, three inning by a Marlins pitcher tonight. And had a couple of strikeouts in the process. Hava wants to know if the game goes late, will you guys play the late night with the fish too? Reluctantly, we will, but we're going to blame you, Havo, if it goes late. If it goes uh, past the midnight hour. I don't think this is the uh, the real Tom House, but uh, at dinner reviews. Says Casey McGee reminds me of Cody Ross, always in the thick of things, dependable, crowd favorite, yeah, and a, and a favorite of his teammates too. You, you love the way he plays the game, his approach, he's hard nosed. Strike to Nice. Caps. Pitching here in the six. Nice, Ligaris, Granderson. Jonathan Nice cranks one into center field. Well, that's only his third hit this year, too. And now one of the hotter Mets comes to the plate. Ligaris has singled three times. He has scored three times. Chuck Hernandez on the horn. Marlins can't afford to let this get any further away from him. Yeah, there, there's been so much happening, but it's still just a two run deficit. Your hope is, and remember, Carter Capps coming back and having not pitched a lot with that uh, elbow soreness. The hope was to have another easy low pitch inning, but with the leadoff base hit, Chuck Hernandez, Mike Redman, they've got activity in the bullpen. With Jennings quickly loosening up, has fallen behind Lagaris 3 0. Well, he fell behind Jonathan Nice, too, so it's one of those things you just hate to, to ask too much. The one thing in some of the rehab assignments that Dan Jennings had in Jupiter, he went a couple of innings each time, so that's good. So it's three and one. Nice at first. Jennings trying to get loose in a hurry. And another hit for Lagaris. He's four for four. Stanton picks it up. And the Mets are in business. And the Marlins have to make a decision here. Do they stay with Carter Caps? Do they go to Dan Jennings? It's a career high in hits for Ligaris. Now then the other thing you have the lefty and Granderson but then you have David Wright. The right handed bat to follow. You know, as, as Mike Redmond was on the phone, I think he was also thinking about, all right, do you make a double switch here if you do make a pitching change? Pitcher spot is due up fourth 
in the bottom of the inning. It's all things you have to think about in a game in which you've already used. Two relievers. Brad Penny went three innings. This is the second inning for Caps. De Sclafani pitched the fourth. And Granderson takes a strike. The other thing with with all managers at this time, you have uh, extra extra men to play with. Kike Hernandez, Justin War, on the bench now. That is hit hard but foul. The hard thing for a manager in this spot, especially at this point of the game in which you're in, is double switching and taking out one of your weapons. Because your bats, your your best bats are gonna get at least two more at bats tonight. And you would probably, if you double switch, you do it with Jeff Baker with the Garrett Jones, but all of a sudden if the Mets bring in some left handers out of the bullpen. You, you've already used Johnson and Baker would be out of the game. You're right. Oh, two Granderson lifts it to left and deep. Yelich back. Nice is tagging. So is Ligaris. Yelich's throw is to second and in is Ligaris. So that's as good as a sacrifice bunt. The Mets move both runners up. Hey, heads up play by Jonathan Neese. Uh, for pitcher, you a lot of times don't see a pitcher react that way on the bases. And then Lagaris just followed. Hey, Neese is pitching in a game in which he's given up five runs but has a two run lead. He knows that every little run helps. And he knows that David Wright has clobbered the Marlins in this series, in this game, in his career. It's three for three tonight, two doubles, two RBIs. Driven in four in the series. And he's got the infield in against hard throwing Carter Caps. And I would imagine because Nice is the runner with the infield in and one out, he, he might not be going on contact. He'll talk it over with Mets third base coach Tim Tuffle. Strike and it's one and one. And if you're Mike Redman, you're thinking ahead. You've got the left handed bat of Lucas Duda. If Caps can get right, he has Dan Jennings ready in case he wants to make that move. Two and one. No doubt that Caps is throwing hard, and that's good to see. The problem has been command. Though that pitch did catch the corner and was at the letters. And so David Wright. Settles back with a 3 1 coming. He went. When you're gearing up for 97, it's tough to stop it. And you know, David Wright's starting to gear up. Caps needs a punch out or he needs to keep the ball in the infield. Breaking ball high, high to left. 
Yelich. It's Nice at third. Yelich running in, makes the catch. Nice on his way to the plate. And the throw not in time. Holding second is Ligaris. Well, Jonathan Nice certainly helped himself that inning. Got the base hit to lead things off. Good base running going from second to third. And then tagging up on that fly ball by Wright. David Wright. Three RBIs now in this one. Three for three night. Now Lucas Duda. Marlins are going to appeal that Nice left early, and the appeal is uh, dismissed outright. Now, you know what? You can ask for a review on this. Or are the Marlins going to make a pitching change? I think they're going to make a pitching change. Yeah, we talked about that with due to the left handed hitter coming up. And as thought because Jeff Baker made the last out. He will leave the game and in comes Garrett Jones. So Dan Jennings. Sons of Anarchy premiering Tuesday, September 9th, only on FX. We just wanted to wake you up if you've been dozing a little bit. Garrett Jones at first base in the double switch. Dan Jennings out of the pen. So Jones in the nine spot. And Jeff Baker leaves. The pitcher goes into Baker's spot. And for Dan Jennings, Tommy, this is a significant moment here. Getting back on a, a major league mound. That scary moment with the Jennings hitting the head line drive. Yeah, it's you're you're absolutely right. It's it's one thing he's gotten back. He had a number of of rehab starts in a ball, but yeah, another thing to get back on the mound in a major league ballpark. Lucas Duda, two outs. Duda an RBI single in the fourth. It's just below the knees. Good 
always like to to get our facts in order. We're talking about uh, Carl Yastrzemski. The year he won the Triple Crown, which was in 1967, he hit 326. It was the next year he won the batting title with 301, 1968. <laughs> we always like to get things straightened out. So Triple Crown came in. Triple Crown came in 67, and in the Triple Crown year, he hit 326, had 44 home runs, 121 RBIs. The next year, he won the batting title, but hit just 301. And of course, that illustrates how hitting in the late 60s tailed off, and baseball lowered the bound. Dan Jennings hitting ahead in Pittsburgh. Jordy Mercer. Line drive. Chuck Hernandez. Has had to go go to the bullpen now three times already in this ball game. Strike three called. Duda is on his way to first. Jennings gets the strikeout. Mets get another run and they lead it 8 5. Eight five Mets lead bottom six emails and tweets. We got this via Twitter. Tommy, when you took this recent picture with a fan at Marlins Park, you probably didn't realize that you were standing next to a Florida Marlins legend. That's Florida Marlins. Here's an older photo to refresh your memory. Muscle boy. Hey, hey, hey. I did not know that. I, I wish he would have said something. Randy in Lake Worth was muscle boy. He's now muscle man. Uh, that's a great photo. Nice going. <laughs> Dan Jennings back in the dugout. Nice strikeout. Salt Slovakia, Ed Trevoria, Jones against Nice. Salt Slovakia to center. Ligaris is there. It has to be a, a nice uh, psychological boost for Dan Jennings to get back up on a. Major League Mound strike out a tough hitter in Lucas Duda. So good for him and he's going to go back out there. I thought you were going to say that had to be a. A nice psychological boost for muscle boy. <laughs> it probably was in the day right. 
Oh, he he I mean, get, he, he was he uh, get the crowd fired up at uh, he was the bomb. Yeah, at the old uh, old football stadium, he'd get them fired up. A lot of ballparks that we travel to, we we see etch right center, well hit in the gap to the wall. He's racing for third on his way, and he is in there. He's found that gap all year. Danny Echeverria, 10 triples on the season. And I love the way he turns around the bases. When he turned around second base, just a perfect executed turn. But uh, the swing is even more perfect. He stayed there all year. That ball driven hard out of the reach of Granderson. And every time it's gotten in that area, he's turned and headed for third. Ten triples. Big at bat, Garrett Jones, infield back. And there's one out runner at third. He's above major league average, 59%. He has scored the run. Nice misses down low. It's 1 0. Remember, the Marlins had a leadoff double in the fifth, Giancarlo Stanton. He never left second. Marlins couldn't budge him. And this was a, an area that gave the Marlins trouble yesterday, even though winning the game, they had three or four opportunities with a runner at third and less than two out and did not capitalize. And nice has missed on all three. If you're Terry Collins. And Christian Yelich is on deck. You almost might think about bringing in the right hander the way Yelich has hit Nice in this one. It's three for three against him. A double and an RBI single. Carlisle up for the second time. And Jones rolls it to second. He'll drive in the run. And Miami gets one back. It's 8 6. Nicely done. That's a good job. Just make contact. You get that runner in with the infield back. And again, with the two run lead, you get a man on and you have the time run at the plate. Toyota Trend. Christian Yelich at home, 11 game streak and over 500 in those 11 games. Right handers up, Buddy Carlisle, Carlos Torres. Carlisle worked a third of an inning yesterday. Torres worked two, two innings. Struck him out. Well, this time Nice gets. Yelich, but the Marlins get a run back. They're down two with three to play.
you can get a Jedi pack for 35 bucks. Braves and Marlins. Come on out. Baseline reserve seats. You get a limited edition Star Wars t-shirt. Meet and greet with Star Wars characters. Now you have to go to Marlins.com slash Star Wars to order your Jedi pack. It's a limited edition Marlins Star Wars t-shirt. Marlins.com slash Star Wars is how you get tickets and participate in Star Wars night. Remember in the old football stadium there used to be a guy that I assume it was a guy that showed up in a Chewbacca outfit mm -hmm. and you know maybe he'll be here. No I don't think so. That went into left field because I don't know that that costume is still the humidity and the heat took a, a huge toll on that costume and, and in his last days it, it looked like just a, a battered shag carpet. It could be a little could be a little musty. Hey the guys got the uh, email Twitter Tuesday t-shirt. Nice going. Den Decker, Echeverria safe. And Den Decker, boy, he can fly, and there wasn't a whole lot for Echeverria to do. He was in front of the bag. If he lays back, then the runner at first base, Darno, beats him to second base, and he doesn't get it out there. So Etch charges. He would love to have stayed on the bag, but he, he just couldn't. And by the time he charged to get the ball, then Decker with his speed beats it out. Westminster Academy. So a local guy and of course a star at the University of Florida. Yeah, born in Fort Lauderdale. So Matt Den Decker got his fan club here tonight. And the Mets are right back in business. It seems like every time the Marlins get a run, the Mets answer right back. 8 6 New York. There have been 25 hits in this game. Dilson Herrera is up. And Herrera is 0 for 3. So a pair of hits against Jennings. That one might be two. Solano got one on the first, just in time. Well, a good job by Donovan Solano, who was taken out by Den Decker. He hung right in there, got the bag, and then completed the throw, a good throw over to first. Watch Solano here. He has to hang in there. He knows he's close enough. Doesn't need to flip. But he knows that Den Decker's right on him. And that just got him. And so now Dan Jennings has to bear down and try to get this out. And keep Darno at third and get some help from Salta Lamacchio. Flores has been active. There aren't too many hitters in this game that haven't been active. I mean, the Mets have 15 hits, the Marlins have 10. Flores is two for three. Well, there are two guys in the Mets lineup that are hitless Dilson Herrera and Granderson. Carlos Torres. Eric Campbell waits on deck as a possible pinch hitter. Tapper to third. McGee has it on to first in time. Jennings a scoreless seventh. Seventh inning stretch in Miami. Marlins down two to the Mets.
the 7th. It's email Twitter Tuesday and a lot of action on Twitter today. People talking about these shirts. Everyone throughout Major League Baseball wearing the K-Cancer shirts to the ballpark today. Jared Kosart tweeted earlier today. Everybody check out. Happy K-Cancer Day to everyone. Now follow at 108 Stitches and get a cool t-shirt like this. Picks to come later of the Marlins and theirs. This is the Marlins t-shirt. Here's some pics of them rocking them on the way to the ballpark, including Jared Kosart, A.J. Ramos, Evaldi, McGee, Ozuna. Everyone wearing the K-T-shirt. It's all for a great cause. You heard him mention at 108 Stitches. That's the company that makes the shirt. They team up with the MLB Players Association. This was all spearheaded by Jason Mott, who's a reliever for the St. Louis Cardinals. And the proceeds from the sales will benefit the Jason Mott Foundation and a charity of the players' choice from the, the representative for each team. Our representative is Jose Fernandez. He chose Live Like Bella, a great local organization that helps support research to develop a cure for pediatric cancer, also provides support to families who have a child battling cancer. So the money from the shirts that you buy when you select Jose Fernandez, the, this color with the, the black and the orange K, when you choose this shirt and Jose Fernandez as the representative for the Marlins, a portion of the proceeds will go right back here into South Florida to help live like Bella. And then, of course, the other portion going to the Jason Mott Foundation. So today is officially Strike Out Cancer Day throughout Major League Baseball. And, guys, hopefully this will become an annual thing. I like it. I like it. And uh, we have a, a pair of shirts up here. Allie was wearing hers during Marlins Live. Line drive, base hit. Solano into right center field. Granderson in the gap picks it up. Solano will stop. And the Marlins have a start on the bottom of the seventh with Stanton, McGee, and Ozuna coming up. This back and forth series, which the Marlins and the Mets in a death struggle yesterday. Miami, a 9 6 win yesterday. In this one, the Marlins were down 4 0 before the Mets woke up. The T Mobile game changer, John Carlos Stanton, who homered yesterday, did it again earlier tonight. This a two run shot. His 35th of the season. He's also doubled. He has 101 RBIs. Torres to the plate. Stanton got under that one. Boy, the, he's going to be upset because you're right. He, he had a good rip. Got under it a little bit. Don't see Giancarlo, and you like to see it. You don't see him go after that first pitch, but he got a fastball. He was looking for it. And just got under it. <laughs> Torres knocks it down, fires it out there, out there. A nice adjustment by Flores on the throw and a promising inning. Goes up and smoke quickly for the fish. Carlos Torres starts a 1 6 3 double play.
Well, that would make for a good fan photo. AT&T brings you the fan photo. Hashtag your photo, FL fan photo, and you could appear just like Megan. Megan has a friend who looks almost like Muscle Boy. That's Christian Yelich. There you go. Very good. nice. Good photo. Eric Young Jr. Pinch hitting. Ah. Torres, the pitcher. Dan Jennings still in there. The Marlins have really had to nurse the bullpen through this. As the Mets got an early lead, knocked out Brad Penny. Anthony DiSclefani got knocked around in an inning. Carter Caps came in and gave up a run. And so far, Jennings has been the most effective pitcher that the Marlins have thrown out there. I'm looking at a couple of scores, Rich. The uh, remember the Phillies through that combined no hitter in Atlanta last night. Phillies in the eighth inning have a four nothing lead. So the Braves haven't scored to this point and only have three hits. And Jennings finishes off EY Junior. Well, this is really good to see Dan Jennings come on and pitch the way he has. So some offensive struggles in Atlanta for the uh, Braves against Philadelphia. Sam Dyson in Miami's pen. Top of the order. Miami can't get one. Ligaris out tonight. He's four for four. He's driven in two. He scored three runs. Jennings will attempt to do it. First time that Ligaris has faced Jennings tonight. You've got Granderson on deck. He's really showing a good slider. Jerry's familiar. Loosening. Wild card leaders. And start a play tonight. The Giants in the one spot. Milwaukee in the two spot. How's Milwaukee doing? Not so good. Cubs 4 1 over the Brewers, top five. That's in Chicago. Anthony Rizzo still out of the lineup. It's a sore back. I think it's a sore back. What I was reading the other day. All right, San Francisco, how are they doing? Not so good. Colorado, 4 0, bottom three. Hmm. Ligaris walks. Corey Dickerson, who hurt the Marlins. In walk off fashion. Has driven in a couple runs. Yeah, that's up to six to nothing now. There's Granderson. Terrific matchup out west tonight at Dodger Stadium. The Nationals and the Dodgers. Doug Fister, Clayton Kershaw. Granderson an 0 for 4, dropping his average to 210. His on base percentage about 100 points higher coming in at 316, but is slugging in the mid 350. So it's not been the type of the year that the Mets and Granderson obviously had hoped in terms of production. This one though a liner down the left field line foul uh, that had trouble written all over it. Uh, you're right with Granderson's speed. He would have had three and the Mets would have had another run. The good news for Granderson, he stayed relatively healthy compared to last year, where his year was really affected by injuries. Speed with the Gars at first, Jennings with one out, has one two. Hit well to center, Ozuna in, now back, and he makes an over the shoulder catch.
at Granderson's problems last year, he was hit by a couple of pitches. Once in the forearm, once on the knuckle, and that put him on the DL. So while Lagaris is four for four with a walk, David Wright is three for three with a sacrifice fly. And it looks like Red's going to make another double switch. Jordani Valdespin's coming in. Sam Dyson is going to come out of the bullpen. West Kendall Toyota called to the pen. Eight runs, 15 hits for the Mets, six runs, 11 hits for the Marlins. You see the total base runners. They have added up right now a two run Mets lead. MLB.TV Premium. Those of you around the world that are watching on MLB.TV Premium, you can celebrate 12 years. So throw yourself a party, crank up the sound, send us an email. Go to Marlins.com for details. Jordani Valdespin in the game at second. And Valdespin goes into the sixth spot in the order, which is where the pitcher was. If this game were played two days ago, I don't know that the Marlins would really have a, as much of a shot as they do to, to have nursed it through with double switches, a deeper bullpen. Now the speed in Solano out. And right up. Which has not been a pleasant sight for the Marlins. Dyson facing right. That's a good point. Rich, because even with the moves the Marlins have made. Justin Bohr still available. Kike Hernandez, Jeff Mathis. Runner goes. Good jump. Salty's throw. And a stolen base. Juan Legatas. Adding to already a productive night. That's his second stolen base in this ball game. He had a stolen base. In the ball game yesterday. And right in a position to drive in another run. He's done that three times tonight. He's been able to get the run home. RBI single in the first, RBI double in the fourth, sack fly in the sixth. He also doubled in the second.
Dyson gets strike two. There's an example of what we were talking about earlier with the differences in in bullpens. There's Sam Dyson coming out of the pen. He throws 95 when Chris Hatcher comes in. He's in that area. And down goes right. Dyson gets it done. And the Marlins down by two go to the bottom of the eighth in Miami with the Mets on top. Dutch Dalton. Dutch Dalton. Now there's a look at Jury's Familia after Torres worked an inning. Familia worked a third of an inning in the ball game yesterday. Yeah. Torres in that inning, it, it happened so quickly, gave up a leadoff. Base hit, got the fly ball, then the double play. Carlos Torres threw four pitches last inning. Marcelo Zuna, Jordani Valdespi, Jared Saltalamacchia against Familia. Third of an inning, Familia gave up. Three runs, two earned yesterday. He misses in. We were talking about the Mets lineup, all the hit hitters that have base hits. The only Marlin hitter in the starting lineup without a hit, even though he's hit the ball well tonight, is Marcelo Zuna. Dana Eveland. In the Mets bullpen. Oh, shit. One and two. Mark in West Palm. What happens to the fish in the backstop aquariums in the off season? It's way over our pay grade, but we'll try to find out. Swing and a miss. Familia strikes out Ozuna. If you've got a question, email us. Foxmarlins at gmail.com. Foxmarlins at gmail.com. If you have a tweet at Foxmarlins. If you're a fish, 
have no no answer for you yet. We'll try to figure out what happens to you when the season ends. Bow the speed now. I think they're in, are they in attendance for like uh, soccer matches or the bowl game that's coming up Do the fish get to watch that. I think these are all questions for a, a later date. See Familia has a terrific arm. Upper 90s fastballs. He was in the middle of all the Mets defensive problems. Yesterday, Familia made a couple of errors in that eighth inning. Could have very easily been charged with a third, one that went to the catcher. Saw a note where the first time the Mets made uh, six errors in a game was in there. He was in their inaugural season. And Marv Thromberry made three of them. I know Marvelous Marv from his light beer commercials. I'm sure Casey Stengel had a few things to say about that game. Now this being little trickler up the line and it gets to the bag. And Duda steps on the bag, gets the out. So South Slovakia up. Suddenly the Marlin bats have grown quiet after a run in the sixth. Strike to Salt to Lamacchio. On a strike, Salta Lamacchia. One and two. Craig has an interesting tweet with all the stats uh, modeled in baseball. Do, do any account for statistics on base coaches? I don't think so. I think uh, individual teams maybe will keep track of things. By the way, we've been informed that the fish stay in the tank year round. So there you go. Just a another member checking in, another member of our crack staff checking in on that. So Tomakia takes out. Vetchabri on deck, count three and two. Yeah. 
left field. Then Decker squares it up and makes the catch. On the warning track, a one, two, three, eight for Jury's Familia. The Mets still lead it by two. Hey guys, well I mentioned earlier about it being strikeout cancer day and everybody wearing the t-shirts to strike out cancer 108 pitches stitches is the place where you can get the t-shirt and if you read the tweet there it says adding additional servers site will be back up soon that's from their official handle on Twitter because basically guys the site has gotten so much action that it has completely crashed I don't know if you can kind of see it on my iPhone. It used to be a full functioning website, but become so popular that it is no longer working. That's how many hits I've gotten. People trying to snatch up these great t-shirts with the part of the proceeds going to help fight cancer. So pretty good, good sign to see that this cause is uh, registered with people. The shirts are becoming popular, even too popular right now for the website to handle, but I'm sure they'll get it up and running and be able to accommodate all those orders coming in. But it's good to see people are liking the shirts and uh, logging on to buy them and help fight cancer. Guys. Just make a note and uh, log on in the morning. Sam Dyson tries to keep it close and the Marlins have kind of been in that mode ever since the Mets jumped on Brad Penny for four runs in his first three innings. Actually in his first two innings Penny would last three and then a parade of relievers Anthony DeSclafani Carter Caps, Dan Jennings and Sam Dyson. Lucas Duda, Travis Darno, Matt Den Decker. In a game where John Carlos Stanton is homered and crossed the 100 RBI mark for the first time in his career. Nissan leaderboard, Palmetto 57 Nissan leaderboard. On the road, we talked about Parkland's Anthony Rizzo, Hunter Pence, and Lucas Duda, 14 apiece. Yeah, he's been a much better hitter on the road. His batting average much higher as well. Don Mattingly has benched Yasiel Puig and one of the top prospects who just got called up, Jock Peterson, is getting his first major league start against Doug Fister and the Nationals. Boy, with Puig really slumping the second half of the season, Hanley Ramirez slumping and then on and off the disabled list. The Dodgers searching for a little offense. Not many people in baseball feel sorry for him with the payroll of 260 million or whatever it approaches these days.
one of the Giants call ups the son of Bruce Bochy. Yeah they're going to add uh, add him to the bullpen Brett Bochy. He was in triple A Fresno this year. There's your West standings the Dodgers and the Giants. Look at the Padres at just six under 65 and 71. I remember talking to uh, Bruce Bochy in San Francisco about his son who you would think because he's a big kid and, and Bruce certainly a big guy. He's not an overpowering guy. He said he's a he's a real good control pitcher but he's not a, a mid 90s guy out of the bullpen but knows how to pitch. The dude has a board. Darno is up. Yeah, his son went to the University of Kansas. Lead off batter tonight for the Mets has reached base seven of the nine innings. Broken bat base hit left field and the Mets uh, continue to pile up hits. Darno's got three of them. Yeah Darno with a three hit night. David Wright has three. Lagaris has four. Then Decker who's stepping in he's got a couple. Look at that 16 hits for the Mets. Here's Den Decker, lots of speed, former Gator. And a couple hits tonight. Fouls it. Scott in a Waikiki is watching from the 26th floor of his hotel. He's traveling for work as an MLB.com account. So it's a, a, a getting closer, right about happy hour out there right now. My ties. Yeah. Enjoy. Oh, and two. But if the Marlins can get to the bottom of the night down by two, Echeverria, Jones, Yelich, Stanton would be fifth. Oh, two from Dyson. Slowly hit. McGee has it on to second one. The turn by Valdespin. Jones, a nice job on a wicked hop to pick it. And the Mets. At the corners with one out. Yeah, that wasn't ever going to be a double play because of the way it was chopped, and also because of Den Decker's speed. So maybe an, an ill-advised attempt, but a, a good help on the other end by Garrett Jones. Dyson has to get Dilson Herrera, and heads up here. Yeah, first and third one out. Herrera has pop and some speed. And you've got Den Decker who can run it first. He's running, pitches in, and Salt Lamakia eats it. Well, we saw the Mets do it yesterday, and they're doing it tonight. Run, run, run. Terry Collins now forces Miami to bring their infield in. With Duda, the runner at third, then Decker at second. Slow chopper, and Duda started to the plate, then stopped. And Echeverria gets the out, and that's a big one to get. Going to Duda, not with a lot of speed. Do you wonder if he was going on contact if there was just indecision on his part. Because that etch actually moved back on the ball. To get the hop. 
There was a little hesitation in do this part. He would have been thrown out at the plate if Edge comes up and makes a good throw. Well, still an out to get Wilmer Flores, who is two for four. Bouncer Jones has it. Flips. Dyson gets the out. Garrett Jones with a couple of nice plays in the ninth. Mets turn it over to their closer. 8 6. Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com and by Florida Power and Lights. In Miami, the Marlins and the Mets at it again. A wild ride yesterday. A 9-6 Marlins win and 8-6 Mets lead. Henry but Mejia is in. He's been kind of in and out with uh, various injuries, but when he's in, he's been the uh, Mets' primary closer. Familia has saved four games, but Mejia with 21. Boy, you got to make him throw strikes. He can he can be in and out with his control. He's got a live arm. He's got a big breaking ball, good fastball, but at times struggles with that strike zone. He's got a two-run cushion. And the Marlins are at the bottom of their order, though with the double switches, you end up with Echeverria, Jones, Yelich, the fourth spot for Miami right now, due up in this inning, is the pitcher spot. And Echeverria tries to check his swing, gets strike. The fifth place hitter in this inning is Giancarlo Stanton. A reason to stick around in a two run New York lead. Justin Bohr has a bat. John Carlos Stanton would like another crack. Two run homer and a double. One, two down low. Put some mileage on the uniform today. Boy, has he though? Triple diving play in the hole. 
Trying to get on base. Miami down two, bottom nine. Got him. Oh, a terrific slider by Henry Mejia. Now Jones, then you got Yelich. They can go after Mejia with the lefties. Obviously, Jones, Christian Yelich, and we saw Justin Bohr, left handed hitter with a bat. Jones goes after a pitch down low. It's 0 and 2. Well, this thing didn't start well for the Marlins. Brad Penny, four runs, first two innings. Anthony DiSclefani out of the pen. He gave up three runs. Saw that pitch by Mejia. It's uh, similar to what we see from Henderson Alvarez. That power changeup that kind of looks like a splitter. We hope we get a chance to see some more of those from Henderson Alvarez. Jones strikes out. Boy, Mejia looks untouchable right now. Well, between the fastball, between that hard changeup, and then a, a nasty breaking ball down and in. He's made some great pitches. Well, you talked about making him throw strikes, and that's a, a pretty good example right there. Only one pitch was in the zone. But he's been close enough with good stuff. It's not like he's been all over the place. And he's gotten ahead. He's ahead of Yelich, 0 and 1. Struck out Echeverria, struck out Jones. Three hit night for Yelich. Boy, sometimes you just have to put things in perspective. The Marlins, if the lead holds up for the Mets, will go to 67 and 70. Last year on September 2nd, they were 50 and 85. Those were the days. Two and one. Checkers post game. David Wright, big night so far. Juan Ligaris, a four hit night. Travis Darno has three hits. The Mets have hits all over the lineup. They banged out 16. Yelich sitting on a 2 1. On the ground, Herrera got it. And the Marlins are done. The Mets win it. Henry Mejia saves it. And this series is tied at a game apiece. No comebacks tonight for Miami. The Mets score early, often, and hold the lead. Giancarlo Stanton homers for the second straight, but it's not enough as New York wins at 8 6.